I consider a Mowgli's burger quite a messy sandwich, and I can't blame our princess for what happened next, as a bone on the outside burger seems a reasonable request. However, the reaction of the waiters and patrons of Mowgli's was not at all reasonable. Some ran away. Another said, I'm going to be sick. Still others continued to hide in front of the furniture. The last waiter standing asked timidly, would you like dessert? Maggie pointed to a large pie on the counter. Is that cherry pie? Yes, miss. Then I'll have some pie. And to drink, miss? Just water, please, and thank you. The cooks grumbled as they made Maggie's strange burger. The last waitress arrived first, carrying a slice of cherry pie. Sorry, I, I missed a couple of pictures there. <clears throat> the waitress glared down and said, I suppose you want me to put this on your plate. On, I, I suppose you want me to put this on the plate, on the table in front of you? Maggie glanced at the pie and said, yes, thank you. But she didn't take a bite. She just ignored her dessert. The waitress seemed upset and ran back to the kitchen to whisper with the others. Finally, they all came back holding each other for support and brought out Maggie's burger. She picked it up, took a bite, then another, and another, until the only thing left was the pie. A waiter started to cry. Another called for her mother. Then it happened, a most unthinkable act, so forbidden and strange, there are several laws in place that, so that it never happens on Tubatoga. Space Princess Maggie ate her dessert last. Now you may be thinking to yourself, eating dessert isn't very adventurous, and usually it's not, unless of course it's illegal and someone calls the cops. <laughs> Moments later, the police arrived. See, it's getting more exciting already. Maggie was arrested and walked backward through the streets and taken to the courthouse on the outskirts of town. Honorable Judge Foon seemed nice until she heard the charges against Maggie. The bailiff cried, Princess Maggie did willfully and knowingly eat her dessert last. Is that right? asked the judge. Guilty, Your Honor, though I'd like to ask for leniency if it please the court. Princesses say that sort of thing all the time. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The judge squealed. Don't think your status as a princess excuses your behavior for breaking 14 laws forbidding anyone eating dessert last. I sentence you to prison for 99 cycles. At this point, I became very concerned, but Maggie whispered into her communicator with a plan. 99 cycles is a long time. We're going to be late for dinner. I said, in 99 cycles, you'll be 14, your highness. We'll be very late then. I believe I have a plan that can get us out of here. I've analyzed the two Katogan construction, and I believe that the blaster array may be the best means of escape. Maybe I can distract the guards, and you can blast your way free. Princess Maggie said, I don't want to hurt anyone. This is just a misunderstanding. I need you to go back to the ship and stay in communication. Save the blasters for later. Yes, your highness. And don't call me your highness unless we're at a dinner party with my mother. Without hesitation, I launched out of the backpack and flew as fast as I could up and out of the reach of the guards right through the glass ceiling. As I was retrieving our ship, our princess was marched down a long corridor and led into a dark cell. She was about to tell me the next step in her plan when she heard a tiny noise. She followed it to the unlit end of her cell, and there she found a small kitten. She reached down to pet the kitten and wondered how it got there. Though I couldn't see her, I've always imagined her wry smile at the moment when Maggie took a closer look at the dark end of the chamber. She wasn't looking at a wall in a dimly lit cell, she was looking at the nighttime sky outside. She walked out and turned to look at her little room. It only had three walls. I heard our princess laughing into her communicator. <laughs> they locked the prisoners outside the prison. What's that, princess, I replied. Just come and pick me up, kids. And so I did. <clears throat> and to the amazement of all the guards and prisoners and space princess, uh, guards and prisoners, space princess Maggie walked to the ship, got in, and we launched into space. As the princess was fixing my shell from the crash through the ceiling, we talked about our first adventure. She said, I should have paid more attention. Their culture is so different from ours. I said, it will take years to understand them, but our adventure log will make new travelers aware of their customs so they can enjoy Tuba Token dessert safely. And in the proper order, mother would be appalled at my lack of manners. Oh well, our real adventure is about to begin anyway. Our real adventure, princess, which one is that? telling my mother we have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> then the image of Tuba Toga, KX-505, the spaceship, the little kitten, and Maggie faded away. And in the quiet dark of a child's bedroom, Kit said, so you see, little princess, your mother loved adventure, just like you. 
But the little princess replied, but no one calls her Maggie anymore, and she doesn't go on adventures and get to fight space pirates. That's true. Now she's Margaret, queen of the universe. Also, Captain Locks and the other pirates are her friends. She never really fought them. It was less of a battle and more of a friendly skirmish. If you like, I can tell you that story. It was your mother's birthday, and your mother grandmother gave her rocket boots as a present. Do you know how it begins? And the little princess, space princess replied, in the center of the universe. That's Space Princess Maggie. Um, I, I hope it's gotten better since the first one that I wrote, which was very Disney, Disney princessy, which I didn't like. Um, this is, uh, I wanted to show this. Uh, this is, I don't know if you guys know how to do this stuff, but that's Jamie Case's website. She's the illustrator. Um, she's really amazing. And she and I, this is probably one of the best collaborations that I've ever worked on. Um, I did a lot of sketches myself and then handed them over to her um, and she also came up with a lot of really original things like she's the one that stuck the cat in all these drawings sort of towards the end of the process and I was like why do you keep sticking cats in this thing and now I gotta find I gotta rewrite it so I can figure out what this cat's doing so I rewrote the story and added the cat which I really like now that's my little space princess right there just so you know um, but anyway, uh, Jamie is really amazing, um, and uh, as poets, and you guys are probably also artists yourself, um, but it's, it was really uh, fun to be able to write and collaborate with somebody. Um, I guess I don't need this picture. <laughs> there she is. Um, this is her in her space suit, so today she's wearing her Princess Leah shirt. Um, uh, and uh, I, all I wanted to say was, you know, uh, there's this, I guess, uh, you know, I'm this 40-year-old guy writing about a space princess, so you, you got to have some kind of justification for it. So I, I've been thinking of some for a long time. I didn't really have it when I first started. Uh, but my justification is this. Um, I, I think that being a space princess uh, offers opportunity. Because, uh, you know, when I talk to people, they say, well, why not an explorer? Or why not, you know, um, why not uh, some sort of adventure? And uh, the cool thing about Space Princess is she can get in her ship and go and do whatever she wants to do whenever she wants to do it. And you know she's uh, a, she's a, a dilettante, so she can uh, you know afford to do it, which is great. Um, so that's why Space Princess. Um, and interestingly enough, I don't know if you sort of saw towards the end, I was leading into another book that that I've worked on, um, which is Space Pirate Maggie, where she stops, she quits the Empire, and then joins up with a bunch of robot space pirates that are all missing limbs and stuff because they can't get you know enough parts to fix themselves so they they rob other people and take their parts and fix themselves um so anyway uh but i wanted to talk a little bit about where the inspiration came from for this book so a friend of mine wrote a book and uh, it's called the difference between the difference between little Go girls and trolls and uh it's a really great book and um before maggie was born yeah and maggie's got this on her shelf um, but a friend of mine wrote it, and it was really amazing. And I was, I was so, I thought it was so cool that somebody could write a book and put it on Amazon, and you could just download it and buy it or whatever. So I did it, and then I decided to write one myself, and 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 then I went crazy and started doing all kinds of crazy stuff, with typesetting and letterpress and stuff. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Kickstarter. So this project was launched by Kickstarter, and um, it raised twelve thousand dollars, a little over twelve thousand dollars. And that is paying for the cost to do all the printing. So I'm doing hand printing um, using Monotype on the letterpress downstairs. I don't know if any of you guys have seen Green Pea Press, but it's downstairs. And so that's where I'm working right now. And the book is actually being printed right now. I'm working on the first signature, and I've got two more signatures to go before it goes to get bound. Um, but, uh, and this is. Green Pea Press. So if you don't haven't been to Green Pea Press, go check it out. But um, I'm working on an 1819 or 18 no, sorry, 19, 1914, sorry, Chandler and Price uh, letter press, which is really cool too. Um, and I wanted to talk about that with you guys a little bit because um, uh, you know I'm here and you guys are work, working with words and you're speaking words and you know I, I don't usually do that. I don't usually read out loud. Um, most of the time I'm typing on a computer and a lot of people do that you know that's the majority of the world just sort of types and things just go out into the internet and 
and they don't necessarily go down on paper. It was really nice to see a lot of people working on notebooks and things, because I've got this book that's downstairs, and I actually, I actually brought it up with me. You can see that like even the version that I read today is different from one, the one that's getting printed. So I'm literally taking type stuff that I've hand laid out, and I'm writing notes on it and changing it and that kind of stuff. So it's this very visceral kind of living word piece where you get to interact with the text in a way that you don't normally get to interact with. Because if you're just typing on a keyboard and it's just going on Facebook or on a notepad somewhere or whatever, it doesn't it doesn't really exist. But once it's on paper, you start really knowing it intimately in a in a good way and in a, in a very bad way. I'm covered in ink all the time. And uh, you know, the other day I was taking a shower and I was rubbing like ink like lines all over the shower and I didn't know where they were coming from and it was this terrible like fat guy in a tiny shower like <laughs> comedy routine was going on but I was the one that was starring in it and couldn't solve the problem. Um, but you get to you get to get really close with the the text and you get to really understand it and um, you know I haven't written poetry in a long time and so when I get to, to come and hear people read it's it's very inspiring to me. And uh, this is a storybook, and it's for children. So, you know, um, in in a similar manner, I wanted this to be read. It's not for kids to read because, you know, Maggie has kind of memorized the book. She can recite most of the lines, but she doesn't actually read it because um, I read it to her. And uh, and so, once you take that text and then sort of translate it with your brain and, and hear it, it's very important. The you know the way the words sound, and I know you guys probably do this a lot more than I do, even where you listen to the way something sounds and you read it back to yourself and so um, I'm gonna have to start coming to out loud more because um, it's very inspiring and, and I like the way you guys do it so um, I just wanted to show you and, and it's eight so I've got to really stop but um this is uh, this is the letterpress stuff that I'm doing so I'm, this is some type that I'm been literally laying out with by hand and these are some images um, this this is the letterpress that you know, hey, did you just kiss me in the crotch? <laughs> uh, this is the letterpress, uh, and uh, and then this is some more type and stuff that I've been working on. And uh, <clears throat> uh, if, you get a, if you get a chance, um, come down and take a look. I'll be there for the next couple of weeks finishing up the book. Um, I and uh, Robert, um, who's been to Hell Out a lot, and um, Sean, which other oh, Sean right there? Those two guys are helping me a lot as well um, to get this book published, and uh, so maybe in a couple of weeks we'll have a book done. Um, and then this is my website, which is guru.pub. Uh, it's Maggie couldn't say kangaroo when she was little; she would say guru. So I, I got this uh, website, and that's where I'm selling my book. And uh, I also have some stuff up here if you guys want to see like some letterpress stuff. You can come take a look. But one of the things I want to say is um, we should do a poetry book. We should, I mean, there's like a bunch of amazing poets. And I think it'd be really cool one day if we went down to the letterpress place and everybody got to lay out your own type and get comfortable with your own words and see what they look like when you stick them on a page by, by hand, one letter at a time. And, uh, you know, print like a little 16 page book or something. It'd be really fun. And I think it'd be really interesting. So, anyway, yeah. thank you so much. going and then also if anybody's interested I'm pre-selling books and I've also got some little letterpress um, pieces that are basically um, I made a bunch of mistakes the other day like I printed a hundred pages of qualis instead of palace so I cut all the text off of it and I've got some pictures uh, without all the, the errors if anybody wants to buy any um, some buy any pictures or anything so yeah. How much is the book? oh uh, so there's two versions of the book the handmade book is $250 and nobody's gonna buy that one um, and then there's going to be a manufactured copy, um, which is twenty dollars. And so, and the manufactured copy will be hand colored. So I'll hand color and scan in one of the the handmade copies. And so the the manufactured copy will be full color, and then the black and white one is the hand printed version. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>